Having an accurate representation of your EGTs in front of you is an extremely important thing. Exhaust gas temperature is probably the single most important indicator of how long your engine is going to last. If you run an engine constantly pulling a big trailer and you are over 1300 degrees sustained, you're going to have significant damage to the inside of your engine. Trans temperature is also very important. The number one killer of transmissions is heat. If you run a transmission over about 220 on a continual basis, it will uh, cause the clutch material to separate from the discs inside the transmission and, uh, and, and shorten the life of it and, and destroy the transmission. Boost is just for fun. I mean, you know, I mean, she's just there for the fun of it. And you can feel it in the seat of your pants as the needle bends, but there's really no value in terms of uh, shortening uh, or lengthening the life of the vehicle. Uh, follow along with me now, and let me show you what the inside of an engine looks like that uh, has had sustained high exhaust gas temperatures. This man here's got 110,000 miles on his F-350 that he pulls with all the time. And we ended up having to pull the heads off of it. Number eight back here, this one in the way back here was skipping terrible. So we ended up, looked like we ended up having to do a valve job. Now it's very important if you ever do this type of job that you get everything very, very clean. You take your time doing it. This is, a, this is an extremely involved process here. It involves several days worth of work and a lot of uh, organization and whatnot. This is not... This is not something for the first time mechanic. Uh, you have to really know what you're doing. Let me show you what the problem is here. On the exhaust valve, okay, which is this one here, what happens is, on this particular one, it's gotten so hot that it actually floated the metal off of the seat of the valve. Okay, what was happening was, is that as the engine was going down the road, okay, and the valve was closing, it would weld itself for just a second it would open back up now the metal would hang on to this seat right here and it would travel out the exhaust and through the turbocharger and eventually end up somewhere and which can't be good for the turbo but every time this thing was closing under heat it would weld a small piece of metal off of the face of the valve now you gotta understand this area here is fairly cool because it has the coolant running through the passages here and uh... but this one here you can see it right there along the edges where there's pieces of metal missing and just for comparison, we'll show you what the remanufactured head looks like. They grind it to a nice three-angle valve job in here. You can, you can see the, the, how well the machine work done, is done. And you see how nice and straight that is. And when it closes, when you put in a new valve inside there, okay, it, see how it sounds different? It seals nice and tight. Now, this is not an uncommon problem. More often than not, you take this to a dealership and whatnot, they'll want to replace the whole engine. This man had already spent a good bit of money on the injectors, and you got to check for the cracks on pistons and whatnot. If you look down inside the bores here, you can see there's still a good crosshatch pattern. You know, the motor's not worn out by a long shot, doesn't burn any oil or anything, and so we have to do a valve job to it. It just needs a valve job because the exhaust valves will burn up. In fact, most of the intakes and the exhaust. Now, what causes this particular problem is a couple different things. What causes this problem is high RPM running. Basically, He's running this thing pretty hard. He's, he's out there running this thing at 3,000 RPM all day long, uh, and it gets good and hot. It's got to be real hot to float metal off the face of the valve like that. So that's the problem. That's what happens. You know, these, these motors, every component in this motor has a lifespan, and every component has its breaking point. And as a result of this, uh, you know, if you run it and run it hard, by God, she's going to fail. But, you know, it, it's a testament to the engineering of the uh, of the valves here that it did not break the valve it just and you know I'm here to tell you this valve was probably red hot under load uh, and 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 this man kept his foot in it good and deep the whole way down the road pulling a and I, I know for a fact he pulls an oversized trailer he carries too much weight on it but DOT don't seem to care so he just keeps running it but you can actually see right in here you can see right in here how much divot how much it's actually taken off of it over time. You look at that valve and you look at that angle right in there where it's actually eaten away. Then you go to a new exhaust valve and you see how nice and straight she is. So 
When you get into it deep and you, you turn those exhaust gas temperatures up, by God, you're going to pay for it, either in, uh, in terms of your piston rings or in terms of your valves, one. But more often than not, the piston rings are hardly ever an issue. Uh, the rings will hold up because they're well cooled. There's an oil bath that, that, that sprays on them from the bottom, and there's plenty of coolant in the block. So, you know, at this point, we do a valve job, and this man here will go away with a motor that runs like brand new. So if you keep an eye on the exhaust gas temperatures, you won't have this problem.